Thanks for joining us for prayer. This is our opportunity to pause, to slow down, to invite God in to the middle of our lives, to into our day, and to offer to God all our thoughts, our worries and concerns, our joys and our sorrows. We're going to be reading Psalm 48 together, so if you've not done so yet, get your copy of the Psalms or open up your Bible app. Um, but before we start to get into that uh, and use that uh, as a springboard for prayer, uh, we're going to do two things. We are going to be still, and still ourselves inwardly, whether it's noisy where you are or quiet where you are. And we're going to light this candle as um, a visual reminder of God's presence with us. So let's do that. Let's be still. As we make ourselves aware of being in the presence of God, being safe in the presence of God. Maybe we might, maybe we might just want to slow our breathing down a little bit. Take slower deeper breaths. We are safe in God's presence. We can rest here. Thank you, God. And we light this candle as a reminder of the presence of Christ with us. So Lord, we give you this time. Lord, have your way in us. Holy Spirit, come, bring us your peace, the warmth of your presence. And Lord, gather together all our scattered thoughts. We give you our worries, we give you our concerns, we give you our joys and successes. God, we ask you to restore to us your perspective. Amen. Psalm 48 is a psalm of celebration. There's lots of uh, beautiful language of celebration and beauty and it is describing the city of Jerusalem. Um, now some of us find that hard to connect to because we've never seen the city of Jerusalem and even those of us who have seen the city of Jerusalem they didn't see it the way these writers saw it. It didn't mean to them what it meant to these writers and there's lots of ideas tied up and lots of feelings tied up in what it means to see the city of Jerusalem. But I think the best way in for us tonight is to remember that for, for these writers uh, who wrote the, the lyrics of this song, for them, Jerusalem meant that God is with us. Jerusalem meant that God's uh, dwelling is among us the people. Uh, that's a theme right through scripture. We see it uh, in the garden in Genesis chapter 2. We see it in um, we see it in uh, Mount Sinai and then in the tabernacle traveling through uh, the wilderness. Um, we see it then when the temple is built even though God's kind of against the temple project. Uh, God still chooses to honor what the people have done and uh, and uh, make his presence there and then uh, we see uh, that idea that God's dwelling will be in the, with the people 
uh, through the prophets. And then, of course, uh, we see that realized in a new way uh, in Jesus, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, that God took on flesh and blood and uh, made his dwelling among us. And then you see it in another way again uh, in Pentecost when Holy Spirit comes uh, and fills the followers of Jesus. And there's this idea in the New Testament that actually, um, you know, this God does not dwell in a temple made of human hands. We hear that several times through the book of Acts. God does not dwell in a temple made of human hands. There's this idea, uh, and you'll have heard it used out of context, that our bodies are a temple. Uh, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You, uh, plural, you together. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's just a remarkable idea that uh, that God would choose to dwell in in this old thing, this messed up place. Um, that the Spirit of God, the presence of God, the power of God would choose to be here. So whenever we're reading this psalm, we're praying through this psalm, and the writers are overwhelmed by the beauty of Jerusalem. Uh, what they're really describing is the, the remarkable privilege that God would dwell with us. And for us, the remarkable privilege that God would choose to dwell in us. Another interesting thing that will help our prayers is that in this song, there's kind of two ways that people react when they see Jerusalem, uh, when they see the city, when they encounter the idea of, uh, God dwelling with the people. Um, if you look at verse 4, you'll see that the first group of people are some kings, and they're warring kings. So these are people who think they have authority in the world, who have a right uh, to say what goes on in the world. We know plenty of those people. And these people in particular are willing to use force to get their way. And whenever they see Jerusalem, whenever they encounter the presence of God, it says in verse 5, they fled in terror. So that's one way that people can react to the presence of God is uh, anger that they won't get their way, terror that they're not the ones in control. But then there's a second way. Um, God's people are filled with joy when they see the city. The city uh, is a place where they are um, secure forever. So when some people encounter the idea of God's presence with us, they find this peace, um, security, safety, joy, cause for celebration. So tonight's psalm is a meditation on what it means that God is with us, a celebration of the fact that God is with us and reflecting on actually there's there's two ways that people react to the idea that God is with us and that's going to help us to pray as well. So let's pray together as we read Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. In the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zaphon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. Pain like that of a woman in labour. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God. God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, 
we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go round her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. So we want to use these uh, these beautiful and energizing words as a as a prompt for prayer. Um, so, as usual, I'm just going to pray what uh, what God puts in my heart through these words, and you just do the same. Bring to God whatever's on your heart tonight, whoever um, you have concern for tonight. Um, bring them to God, knowing that God is good and that God answers. So, Lord, we thank you for this uh, for this beautiful picture of your presence with us and lord the first thing that comes to my mind is just to pray for the city of jerusalem today and the surrounding regions lord a place of such conflict and a place lord where um there are two sides of a conflict both of whom are very convinced of their uh, moral or divine right and lord it seems like there are terrible things uh, that are being done there. So Lord, we pray that you come uh, as the Prince of Peace to that place. Lord, some people are very certain that they have the right solution to that problem. Lord, I just want to pray tonight for your solution. I want to pray as Jesus taught us your kingdom come, your will be done in the city of Jerusalem today as it is in heaven. And Lord, as the psalmists were, were celebrating um, the sight of the city, that beautiful visual reminder that um, you, God, have made your dwelling among us, God, we celebrate that too. Lord, we are not alone. We're never alone, no matter if we feel it. God, you have made your dwelling among us. Lord, you have made yourself known through Jesus. And Holy Spirit, that blows my mind, Lord, that you come and dwell within us, your people your church thank you lord help us not to take it for granted help us not to forget uh what that means the privilege of life with you and lord uh all of us i was going to say some of us but all of us tonight need more of you we need to be uh, more tuned in to you holy spirit we know that you're not withholding any of your good gifts god and um, it's just that uh, we get distracted um we look away from that gift we don't hold our hands open to receive what it is you want to give us so right now lord in a moment of quiet we just want to open ourselves to whatever it is you want to give us holy spirit whatever power we need whatever grace we need whatever healing we need um and maybe you want to join me i'm just going to hold my hands open in a in a gesture of receiving let's just be still for a moment uh, and let holy spirit work Lord, even as we're able to celebrate your presence with us, um, we know the truth of what we see here uh, in this psalm, that there's some people who are uh, horrified, uh, who are terrified. Um, 
yeah, like like we read uh, elsewhere in the scriptures that um, to some we are the aroma of Christ and to others we are the stench of death. Um, and these kings, uh, when they saw Jerusalem and they realized the, the greatness of, uh, of God's dwelling place, they were terrified. that their uh that all their armies all their power all their money was not going to stand in the face of god and so we thank you god that you are mighty that you are powerful um that yes you are a lamb but you're also a lion and so lord when we look around and see uh all those uh just as the kings amassed their forces and advanced together lord all the all the powerful uh people all the people who control um violent forces lord all seeking their own uh, greatness lord we thank you that you're almighty god and that you come in judgment we want them to know uh, the fear of the lord but most of all lord uh, we want them to have a transformation of heart where they come to trust you lord and trust that your way is best lord in the psalm the um, the kings are terrified because they know they're not going to get their way. But uh, but the people within, uh, the people who are meditating on your love, God, they know that it's okay for them not to get your way, get their way, because your way is best. Uh, your way is justice. Your way is mercy. Your way is love. So Lord, we pray that we'd never be like those kings. That we'd never be going out and making our own plans trying to force our own way, especially as now as we go onwards as a church into what you have for us, Lord. We pray, verse 14 again together. This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even to the end. Amen. Amen. Why don't we say these words together? O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Grace and peace be with you.